We are here at Hartman Farms learning all about the American chestnuts. Follow along to see how you can grow the American chestnut. Diamond B Farm coming at you with another video with Mr. Steve Hartman. He is a chestnut guru, American chestnut guru, and uh, he's going to tell us a little bit, a bit about himself. Uh, uh, I've been working with chestnuts for about 25 years, American chestnuts, and I uh, found a few on an original farm in Warren County, K Kentucky, near Bowling Green. And so these are some of my chestnuts that I've been growing for several years. We've got a really, really nice one, about 40 feet tall, here behind us, and some. Some beautiful trees and I've been uh, breeding these trees for resistance and uh, hand selecting specific trees that have resistance from the American chestnut blight or the chestnut blight that kills the trees. These trees are magnificent. They grow up to 10 feet in diameter or well over 100 feet tall and they're worth preservation. My goals is number one to preserve genetics from different locations throughout the country and combine pollen and mass mass pollination is trying to develop and improve the tree. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of research around this. I've been working with funguses, inoculating the trees with funguses to help with the blight resistance um, and growth rates and moisture. Uh, retention. The you know, fungus is amazing, um, but there's so many things about this tree and not very many people have. We've got almost 700 American chestnuts out here right now and we're hoping to increase that. We pulled some genetics from New York and uh, different locales, but we'll just show you a little bit. I'll show you a canker on this. This is a tree from Kentucky that's showing a little bit of resistance and this is this is damage from the blight. This canker has been here for uh, this is four years now, and you can see the canker has not spread, and you can see the swollen area from where the canker is, and the trees tolerating the blight. It the resistance the resistance is fairly complex. Um, it's not easily inherited. I get about one out of a hundred trees have improved or a little better resistance um, so there seems to be an activation gene that the initial canker is worse and then the secondary cankers are not as bad I don't know if that's due to some symbiotic fungus interactions or exactly what's going on but yeah, the research is wide open the trees wonderful for food they're delicious you can dry them you can grind them into flour so it's a worthy enterprise and um, um, that's what I do. So welcome to Hartman Farms and um, I'm glad you watched this. Uh, a lot of people ask questions whether their tree is an American chestnut or a hybrid chestnut um, with the Chinese tree. Um, just one note, the Dunstan chestnut is a 50% hybrid. Uh, half American and half Chinese. So it's not a pure American chestnut. And one way you can identify whether a tree is a pure American chestnut, basically, number one is the leaf shape. Um, number two is the bud angles. And number three, whether the leaf has hairs on the underside of the leaf. Uh, during the growing season, when the stems are growing, they have stipules that will come out from the side of the leaf and they should be, they should, the stipules during the growing season will come out at 90 degrees. And you can also see the stem, the bud is facing 45 degrees. That's important. If it's parallel with the actual stem, that's a Chinese characteristic. The other thing I like to look at is the leaf shape. It should be shaped like a canoe the tips of the leaves should have a hook be hooked on it have a hook on the edge of the leaf um, also i like to look at how the leaf goes to the stem it should go gradual it should not have broad shoulders 
And this is a pure American chestnut from Kentucky. Um, there are a little bit of phenotypical differences in regions. Um, you might see in New York a little bit different shape and configuration just due to genetic variances. Um, but typically, the stems themselves also have no hair on the stem. If you look at a Chinese tree right now in October, there will be hair on the stem and the stipules are still attached. The Americans fall off. But my first thing is I look at the stem, okay, if it looks white, it's probably got these fine hairs on it. Um, I look at the bud angles and I also look at the leaf shape. You know, does it have hooked edges? So it's um, pretty much an F1 hybrid. Um, is fairly easy to identify uh, that it's not pure American. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there's lots of hybrids out there um, that people use. They planted Dunstan chestnuts in the woods, so you get the genetics mixing up between these different species. The European chestnut does not live in Kentucky. The blight kills it just like the American chestnut, so you're not going to have a problem with hybrids um, between the European chestnut and the American chestnut, except on the west coast. I've been working with a guy determining hybrids with uh, European chestnuts, and that's a little more difficult, but we don't have that problem um, in the eastern U.S. So uh, That should give you a handle to identifying your tree. I get a lot of questions on this, and it's not, it's not very difficult. Anyone can do it. You can look on the underside of the leaf with a magnifying glass or with a microscope and you're going to see fine hairs on a hybrid and a Chinese, but pure Americans, nothing. It's just going to look like a green landscape under the microscope. So um, I do have some images on my website of microscopic images, so you can check that out if you want, but fairly straightforward, guys, and uh, happy growing. I have a lot of people asking, you know, how to plant and grow uh, the American chestnuts they buy or they get from other organizations. And one of the most important things is protection. Um, uh, these animals can smell the nut probably a hundred feet away, and they're going to find it and dig it up. Or, and uh, you have to have underground protection and a cage. So I've got. Um, I bury a five gallon pot, I cut the bottom out of the pot, and I put a slit up the side, and I bury the pot in the ground. And then on top, I don't have it on this one, but, um, but I put chicken wire on top of the, of the pot, and then I put a cage on top. And you might think, that's excessive. Why are we, doing for, why are we building Fort Knox? The underground mice, voles, uh, moles, they can smell the chestnut. And they burrow about six inches, six inches underground and they will eat every single nut. You can plant a thousand chestnuts. You'll be lucky to get one to survive. Those mice smell them. So you have to put underground protection. Um, that's really important. Uh, there's over, I think, 17 different species of voles in the state of Kentucky and they are destructive. Um, so I use these little aluminum tags, they're permanent tags, I identify the cross that I use for this particular tree. Plus if you have a, a pot buried in the ground when you water it, the water goes right down to the tree to the roots. So once the tree gets about four inches in diameter, that slit you put in the side of the pot, all you do is, and it'll tear right out and pull out of the ground. So, and as a tree, if you want to be lazy, you don't want to pull them out, just let the tree grow. And as it grows, it'll split where it slit, and it'll eventually push up out of the ground. But this is important. Raccoons get them. The, the rabbits will snip every single one off. There's so many things. So you gotta have, on top of the ground protection, you got to have under the ground protection. If you plant seedlings or you grow them in a pot, make sure you put a chicken wire over the top. Chipmunks will jump in it, uh, squirrels will jump in it. You can have a seedling this tall, they'll pull it out of the ground and they'll eat the nut off the root and they'll kill your seedlings. So it's really important you protect them whether you're growing them in pots or not. I had a, a man that had a squirrel chew through his greenhouse and he pulled up every
every single chest that I gave you. So it, you need to remember that. If you want to have success, protection is an order. Well, welcome back to Hartman Farms again. We're talking a little bit about apple trees. And uh, I'll tell you, this is, this is what's called an enterprise apple. Uh, most people haven't heard of it. I, in my opinion, it puts Honeycrisp to shame. Nothing against Honeycrisp, but, uh, but the trees, these are grown in Kentucky. Uh, they're immune, uh, basically immune to all diseases. They're a great eating apple. Uh, but the bugs still get after them, so you know that's something you're still gonna have to spray them. I've had a lot of people get buy trees from me, and they're upset because they have to spray them. This is not an organic produce, but the tree won't die. The fire blight, scale, and the different diseases that get on it—they're pretty much immune to it. They grow great, um, but we've all these the enterprise ripens around the first of October. Um, and our other trees is called Red Free and Williams Pride. They ripen the first, second week of August and they are fantastic. If you like to make juice, if you like to make wine, hard cider, that type of thing, uh, there are trees to have. Remember Red Free, Williams Pride and Enterprise. Just, they do really well in Kentucky in this region. And I'm sure they do well in other parts of the country. But very prolific trees. They produce huge crops, large apples every single year. So um, if you're into that type of thing, it's just a great, you, they're kind of an unknown variety, but they have that resistance that you need to be successful. <laughs> what was it, Quinn? These clips might be a little long. We just wanted to show you how you can harvest a chestnut. So in the next few clips, you'll see what the actual chestnut looks like. They are very prickly and they're very hard and they're not very nice to touch, basically. So you can see how um, Quinn has a glove on, she's picking them up, and how Mr. Hartman is using a apple picker to reach up in the tree to get them. So we're looking for a chestnut that has dropped. <laughs> We actually bought several chestnuts from Mr. Hartman, and I will leave his contact information in the description below. 